The house is pulling 2,600 watts. The Sun Gold solar panels are living up to the expectation. We're taking in just over 1,000 watts. That should be enough to run the critical things in this trailer house. Last thing we have to do is wire in our electrical strip. Installing your own solar can seem out of your reach. I'm quickly going to take you step by step, wire by wire. <laughs> One of the best ways to reduce your electricity bill is solar. But installing your own solar can seem out of your reach. Today I'm going to take those complications out of the picture by explaining to you each item you're going to need. I'm quickly going to take you step by step, wire by wire, component to component. We're going to install these 450 watt solar panels, these four 12 volt batteries totaling 48 volts for our power bank, and this EG4 inverter charger that's going to be powering the critical things in this house. I'd like to start by introducing to you the EcoWorth 12 volt lithium battery. This is a lithium iron phosphate battery with Bluetooth and low temperature cutoff. This 100 amp hour battery can be used for a variety of things. In our case today, we're going to hook them all together for our 48 volt battery bank. When we hook four of these EcoWorthy batteries together, it's going to give us our 48 volts at 100 amp hours. That should be enough to run the critical things in this trailer house. Most 48 volt battery banks are going to run you way over a thousand dollars. The other question people are going to have is how long will these batteries actually last? Well they claim here more than 4,000 cycles which is going to be equivalent to about 10 year lifespan. I chose these batteries for this solar setup because of the price and the reputation. I've compared the other prices and I've read many of the reviews and I believe I'm on the right track. EcoWorthy is going to be a main player and a backbone in this system. Okay, although nothing hardly ever goes as planned, here's our plan. We're going to build a system that's not attached to the roof, but just above the roof. This is going to give us the legalities of a portable solar system, thus requiring no permits and violating no codes. Okay, I know this does not look like a lot of lumber, but it was $140 at Home Depot. So I put the things that were tedious and time-lapse so you could actually see me build the whole system. <laughs> Okay, now that we got the four panels installed up here above us, I'm going to show you how to wire each one of them. Okay, on the very far end here, we're going to have the positive terminal. On this end, we're going to have the negative terminal. So what we're doing is we're wiring these panels in a method called series. The positive will be open on this end, and the negative will be open down here on this end. And in between will all be crossed together like this. That's what they call series. So here we are, negative to the positive, negative to the positive, negative to the positive, and then the negative coming out at the very end, positive coming out at the very end here. So now we'll take this positive that's here on this end of the panel, and we're gonna run a wire along here, and all the way back down to here, and then we'll take our negative, and then we'll have our both positive and negative to come down the pole here. Once we get the two wires, the positive and negative ran down the pole here, we're gonna go into what is called an isolator switch. That switch will actually turn the power of the panels on or off. This is the same type of switch that the fire department requires you to have. Okay, this is our solar isolator switch that we bought off of Amazon for only $39. So go ahead and mount this switch right here on the four x four, right about chest level. Now that we have the oscillator here mounted on the 4x4, it's time to run all the positive wiring all the way over here, along here, and down to the oscillator here. And then we'll take the negative and run it down to the oscillator here also. Coming out of the bottom of the oscillator is also going to be the positive and negative, and that's what's going to actually go into the house and into the inverter. Thank you. 
Now finally, here we are. We have the positive and the negative right here in our hand coming from all four of the panels. Now we're gonna run our positive in here and our negative in here. The next thing we wanna do is start preparing our wiring for our eco-worthy batteries. We need to configure our battery bank wiring and put the lugs on the end of them. This one's a little big, but it'll work. Okay, now that we got all 12 volt batteries ran in series, we should be able to test the voltage and get somewhere around 52 volts. And there it is, 53 volts. Now that we have the batteries all wired up in the configuration that we want, we can start to build the box around it that we're gonna put it in. Okay, now that we've got our battery bank with our battery box done, the last thing to do is gonna to be to wire the inverter. Okay, we're gonna start by putting the ground rod in. Okay, now that we got the ground rod in, we're just gonna tighten the ground wire down to it. Okay, now let's tidy up the wires real quick. Okay, everything is finished and wired here on the outside. Now let's go to the inside and finish installing our EG4 all-in-one inverter. Okay, when you're installing the inverter, we need to have a T-class fuse and a 48 volt breaker switch. That breaker switch is gonna run between the battery and the inverter. Those things are on order and in the mail, but for now, we're gonna go ahead and install the system using this isolator switch. This isolator switch is made for 12 volts at 100 amps, so at 48 volt, it should handle 25 amps. It's gonna be just fine until Amazon delivers. Okay, here we are in the house attempting to wire up the batteries and the inverter. First thing we're gonna do is get the wiring on our switch. This is the bottom side of the board. These two wires here are gonna go to the battery. The one off the switch is gonna be the positive and the one going directly out to the inverter here is gonna be the negative. Now what we wanna do is wire our positive right here to our positive terminal on the battery and our negative to our negative terminal on the battery. Side's good, this side tight now. Right, we're good. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and just put a couple screws in to hold this top plate on real nice. Okay, we have our PV and ground wire ran in from the outside here. Now we have our power coming off of our batteries here, our positive and our negative. It's time to hook the inverter up. Okay, and here's the beast. This is our EG4 3K. This is an off-grid inverter. It's made to do solely off-grid. This works good for a cabin or a backup solar system at your house. Now, even though we marked all these wires, we are going to test them with the voltmeter to make sure that nothing is backwards. All right, cool. We definitely got power, 145 volts DC. I'm gonna run back outside and turn this off and then we're gonna wire everything into the inverter. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is hook up the PV wires. 
It's clearly labeled on the bottom of the EG4. PV wires in here, positive on this side, negative on this side. Probably just use a regular screwdriver, but I'm gonna take it easy. I'm trying to get it done also. Okay, there's the positive wire in. Let's get it tightened down real good and snug. Okay, the negative's in, let's tighten it down. All right, the positive and negative are in. Power coming from the solar panels are hooked in. Now let's hook the ground down here. On this particular EG4 inverter, the ground is going to go right here on this little screw here. We'll go get a connector and crimp it on here where we can get it screwed to here. Okay, we're getting really close. The last thing we have to do is wire in our electrical strip. We're gonna cut the end off this plug and we're gonna wire it directly in here where it says AC out. Okay, the green is gonna be our ground wire that's left, and this ground wire has to go right here with the same place where our other ground went. Okay, we'll go ahead and put the cover on it. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put our power strip up here on the front of the box. We've got everything wired into the EG4. Everything's looking good, so it's time to power it up. Okay, there is a sequence to powering this up. Okay, the first thing that EG4 tells us to do is power up the batteries to the inverter. So the inverter's powered up. We've now got power to the power strip. Okay, I just turned the isolator switch on. Let's see if any power at all is coming in from the solar panels. Right now, the solar panels are bringing in over a thousand watts. It looks like right at 1150 watts or 1.5 kilowatts. It's only 10 a.m. in the morning and the sun hasn't even reached its full capacity yet. Keep in mind, this is only 1800 watts worth of panels. That tells you that this entire system is really efficient. Now that the system is up and running, I would really like to see how much will it actually run. Let's do some testing real quick and see what this system is capable of. We're gonna test this system using using this 75 inch TV, our internet modem, a microwave, and our toaster. We're gonna run all these things at once simultaneously against this system. Okay, we have our 75 inch TV on and running, the internet modem going. This would be equivalent to a medium sized window unit. You can hear the EG4 inverter really ramping up. We're taking in just over a thousand watts from the solar. Our batteries are stable at 51.9 volts. We're putting an 89% load on this inverter. The house is pulling 2,600 watts. Okay, well that's pretty amazing to be able to run all that at once. This system's gonna be able to sustain the refrigerator, a deep freezer, the TV, and internet. It should have no problem sustaining this 24 hours a day, seven days a week. During the daytime when the high power is coming in from the solar panels, you will also be able to run an air conditioner. I can't complain, the Sun Gold solar panels are living up to the expectation. The EcoWorthy 12 volt batteries are holding their own just like I suspected. So now what? Let's quit worrying. We're set. Our estimated total cost here for this system is just $3,427. That's a drop in the bucket for a nice system like this with that kind of security. The links to build this exact system will be in the description of the video.